be able to do um, everything uh, without having to save and control C too much. Uh, if something looks wrong, you uh, don't be afraid to just redraw it. We do it. Um, yeah, that's <laughs> at least that's my opinion. So yeah, I'm putting some shades into the hair. Uh, first, I used a really small brush uh, and made uh, uh, the basic hair layout, and then I took a color um, to to make it more shapey, so it's not so um, so it gets some shape of hair uh, and not uh, like just a few lines um, spreading in the wind. <laughs> Uh, it would look like she's thinned hair. Uh, also important to notice here is she's just having white hair, but it's important when you paint to not use white as much. Uh, you can see the teeth are not white. The hair is actually not completely white, at least not on my screen. Uh, and why you should not use white is because uh, it's often things that you think is white is often not white. It's more almost white or uh, and you all you have to use the the, the, the bright colors for lighting uh, so using them for hair will make it uh, basically impossible to uh, to make light in the scene so try to stay away from totally black or totally um, white parts uh, you should use blue instead of black it's a basic rule painting really really dark blue. Uh, here you can see I'm bouncing some light away from the, the eyes and I've also bounced some purple uh, into the hair. Um, this is a, is a good thing to do when you're rendering. Uh, bounce light around in the scene, use, the, use the, uh, the environment and things around the character and the characters to to smudge together the colors because everything bounces colors uh, and depending on what kind of surface it is it receives more or less color. Uh, you can see the crown for example it's going to be metal so I'm going to bounce a lot of color into the crown. Uh, that's a good way of making something look metal. You uh, like this, uh, you, you put brown and uh, uh, and the, the the round line colors into it, and, and here you can use some brighter white to give the reflection, and then some black often or some lines, as the the color around it uh, reflects into the mall, and give it the mall feel. And you can also see that I'm doing a lot of more rendering around the head parts. Just me, I like to do that. Uh, like I told you before, I think uh, you can almost see the character now. Uh, you don't really need the body to be that much rendered. You can understand that it's a spider. Uh, basically, uh, here I'm also putting on some more uh, some more red uh, in the um, uh, light parts uh, to make it a little bit more skinny and uh, a little more. more uh, good looking. Um, so now I'm gonna do something really strange. Uh, I'm gonna do some line art, and this is basically just because the style of the game is line arted. Uh, the characters are always line arted, uh, and it's important to keep style. Uh, if you're making a game, make sure you you have a style. If you have a kind of color palette and you have a way that you do things, do them the same all the way through. Uh, so that's why I'm doing this line art now. Uh, to make sure that she keeps the style of the game when she's in there. Uh, she'll look like uh, the rest of the characters. Um, normal cases I wouldn't do this, but as she's actually going into the game, she needs the line art. So, uh, and well, the hair is a little bit crappy right now. Um, you can spend a lot of time doing fine line art. It's uh, a lot about uh, your hand skill. Uh, you need to be um, firm and precise. And uh, when you do line art, uh, 
if, if you compare it to painting where you can sort of just repaint and resize and change a lot of things when you when you do line art you have to do it right from the beginning so that's good to know it's just a lot of practice uh, just because you're a good um, uh, painter doesn't mean you're a good line art <laughs> maker uh, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm the best but I, I'm okay <laughs> Uh, even though this is not my favorite piece of line art, but it, it will work because it's really small pictures, so a lot of the, the, the unfine tuning will be tuned just because it's so small that people can't see the difference. Uh, and you can get away with a lot of that kind of stuff, so make sure you you only spend the time you need to spend uh, on the work. Uh, don't overdo it. Uh, that's a problem a lot of artists have, that they they are so proud of their artistry that they can't really um, do it, do only use the time that it should take to make what they're doing. Uh, you can see here, uh, I'm just drawing the lines really quickly, spinning around. Uh, I'm, I'm using a bigger brush now for the, for the body, because um, I want it to be I wanted it to be showing a little bit more. To see here, the legs really simple. Just a few lines, and so it's starting to be become finished. Uh, and that's basically it. Uh, in the, the end of the tutorial, we s you will see the home page again. Uh, I'll upload more. Uh, I hope you liked it. I hope it wasn't. Um, that you learned something from it. Uh, if you have any questions or anything you would like to see in the next video, please just check in and write in the commentary. Um, and so, yeah, some fine tuning. Uh, this is always also good to know. It's, it's also so nice to use the lighting effect that you have if you have a light color. Like this time, I'm using sort of a reddish color that you use it on everything that's in 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 the area. Uh, I'm gonna start using it on the body uh, of the the spider as well, even though it's brown. I'm using this red color because that's the color of the light. So make sure you know what color of the light is and and bounce it around a lot. Make sure that it is uh, used all around. I, if you're not good with color. My tip is always to use as few colors as possible and just do a little bit of variations between the colors. Um, I'm not all that good with color, <laughs> so I try to use as few colors as possible. That often works uh, to my advantage. Um, like I said, hope you like it.